Something unexplained is happening in our nation's capital, and it has both Democrats and Republicans alarmed. A mysterious slime is defacing several memorials. It hit with an intensity we hadn't seen before. Those are the words of Fire Chief Mark Hartwig describing the wildfire in San Bernardino County, California. Yeah, I mean, we're, 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 well, we're certainly in a period right now where we've seen quite a, bit, quite a few extremes. And, but we've had some periods in the past where we've uh, had clustering of, of really big, uh, uh, you know, catastrophic rainfall events in the past as well. But I tell you, the last decade or so really uh, does raise some eyebrows and uh, very, very suspicious. And as what this means for, you know, policy implications, uh, I mean, this is just so complex. The biggest thing was we had to continually retreat against that advancing wall of fire. And that was something that I haven't witnessed in this section uh, ever. And in my 40 years of fighting fire, I've never seen uh, fire behavior so extreme. Homes reduced to rubble, neighborhoods that look like war zones. Last month was the hottest ever since scientists have been keeping records. When they call the flooding in Louisiana, a, a one in 500 year event. What does that effectively mean? That effectively means that you have a 0.2%, 0.2% of that flood of that magnitude in that area occurring in any given year. But these numbers are losing their meaning. We've had eight 500 year events in just the last 12 months in the United States in six different states. So when you have eight Eight events that are supposed to happen only once in 500 years happen in 12 months. We have a problem. Well, from coast to coast, the temperatures have soared, with July being the hottest in recorded history, the 10th month in a row to break monthly temperature records. This is the slime. This is the a black mass is spreading like a disease over the marble of Washington, D.C. Abraham Lincoln was the great emancipator, but so far, the National Park Service hasn't been able to free the 16th President's Memorial from the slime between Tennessee and Ohio on the on the edge it sticks oh, right out over there, yeah. you see that real dark spot and it's starting to creep downward a little bit yeah. Litterst says experts don't know where the biofilm came from or how to get rid of it it's also now in Arlington National Cemetery and on the Washington Monument but it's by far the worst at the Jefferson Memorial where the white dome is now covered in patches of black Greg Moore can still remember the good times, knowing all too well times have changed. A historic spurt of overdoses. Good evening, I'm Tanner Hesterberg. We begin tonight with a developing story just across the border in Huntington. Emergency responders say they saw a wave of overdoses in a short time span unlike anything they've ever seen. Emergency on Skid Row, one after another, individuals collapsing. And all of a sudden, um, this lady was on the ground with this phone coming out of her, shaking. This security guard saw it happen at 5th and San Pedro. An hour later, another one fell down out there, and then the same thing started just shaking, and, you know. Like, like a seizure? Yeah. Another spike afternoon, more than 20 were transported, and cases kept coming. This newly released footage showing 33 people in Brooklyn transformed into zombies, revealing the true dangers of the growing abuse of synthetic marijuana, or K2. Tonight, we lift the lid on this nightmarish epidemic. Many people across the Hudson Valley don't even know exists. They are the walking dead. Look at them. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. They're just like looking like zombies. I vomited all over myself. Teenagers transformed into vomit-hurling demons. <laughs> as a public health nightmare takes hold of the Hudson Valley. It's a devilish drug. Look at this. It looks like a war zone. This never before released body camera footage proves just how dangerous synthetic marijuana, or as it's better known, K2, can really be. No, this is not a scene from a movie. Dirk screaming past out. This is a real street corner in downtown White Plains. Man, do you have an idea in here or no? And these are real kids in the throes of a K2 overdose, covered in vomit just a few weeks ago. Look, look, look at her. But for Commissioner David Chong. He normally talks, so this is out of character. Look at the way he's just sitting. None of this makes sense. There's just not one thing in this case that seems to make sense. 
Three people stabbed, two fatally, by a college student on a rampage in Martin County. It is a story that has now captured the attention of the nation. Officers say they arrived at the scene to find a husband and wife killed and the suspect biting the man's face. Martin County detectives say Haroff made animal noises as he bit off pieces of John Stevens's face. They said Haroff displayed such strength that dog bites and tasers didn't affect him. It took multiple officers to subdue him. The mother told police that her son had recently been acting delusional, saying he was immortal and claiming superpowers. Sheriff believes her roof may have been under the influence of something, though his initial drug tests have come back negative. He says the 19-year-old was making animal-like noises and had enormous amount of strength. Not responding to a dog biting, not respond, responding to uh, repeated stuns from a taser. Uh, taken three, three, four deputies and an officer and a dog to get him off. That's somebody with a lot more strength than you would normally encounter. How the police had to come in, canine unit. That, this is all very dramatic stuff, very theatrical, very, you know, out there. Almost movie-like. No movie, but a true horror. Unusual amount of trauma. We, we have some experienced detectives. One of my detectives on this case worked homicides in New York and said it was a case uh, as bad as he's ever seen. Deborah Christian, clinical director at Spencer Recovery Center in St. Pete Beach, says many of the dangers associated with using these drugs are still a mystery. What does that do to your brain long term? Do we even know? We don't even know. Firefighters told to remove American flags from their fire trucks. The order came from the Fire Board of Commissioners in the town of Poughkeepsie. The decision has a lot of people upset. They're seen here during a ceremony putting away the flags after they were ordered to remove them from the back of trucks. I was very disappointed when the board members that were against having the flags on the vehicles gave me the directive to have them removed. The removal order coming from the Fire Board of Commissioners, Joe Armstrong, who didn't want to talk to us, one of three who voted for the removal. Why can't you just tell us why you didn't vote, why you voted for the flag to be taken off? And one of the most prestigious Ivy League schools in the country has made a big change to its policies to make the school politically correct. The school says that all documents have to reflect that male and female are not the only two genders. There are no longer just men and women on these greens. When you get to Princeton this fall, you're not a freshman, you're now a first year student. Our country wasn't founded by our forefathers, but by our ancestors. And mankind is gone. Now it's humanity, or just people. This seems like not relevant at all to educating kids, which is the point of Princeton, right? Well, of course. Uh, tr Princeton has traditionally been never, not conservative, but a little bit more traditional, not a hotbed of radicalism. But this is the inevitable logic of PC. This is where PC leads. This is where every higher education institution is going. This is where our public institutions are going. This is where the, eventually our administrators and others, they cave. Because the, the PC uh, diversity police, the multicultural police, right. the postmodern, secular, anti-traditional, they win. And so they just cave and say, okay, no more pronouns. No more him and her. <laughs> no more <laughs> pronouns. <laughs>we're looking at the transformation from fools to friends iran and russia once sworn enemies now bosom buddies causing up to one another it is the first time in fact that iran uh, has allowed another state to use its military airfield since the Islamic Revolution in 1979. So for Iran, that is a major step, uh, especially if you think that historically the relationship between I Iran and Russia has, has not been a particularly good one. Historically, they've been enemies. Clearly now, though, with the situation in, in Syria, they're coming very much closer together. The Turkish foreign minister claims his country's considering military cooperation with Russia as NATO seems to be shying away from relations with Ankara. Earlier this month, Turkey also suggested that Russia and Turkey carry out joint operations against ISIL in Syria. Turkey also says it is negotiating with Iran on a strategy in Syria. On Thursday, the Jewish press published an article titled, Moscow Calming Israeli American Fears of Russia-Turkey-Iran Coalition. Did you catch that? Just 
call me silly. <laughs> I've been called worse. Call me silly. But is that not exactly what Ezekiel 38 says? Quoting the press. Tuesday's meeting in St. Petersburg between the two former feuding foes, Russian President Putin and Turkish President Erdogan drew considerable attention. Government-run news agency TASS reported, noting that the Russian-Turkish rapprochement is coming while Russia has been expanding its relations with Iran and Ankara and Tehran have also been bridging the gaps between them borne by almost four decades of a volatile Islamic Republic on Turkey's border. You know, it wasn't that long ago when we first started doing these prophecy updates back in 2006 that one of the unknowns was how is Turkey going to get and turn this corner so they're allied with Russia and Iran. Yet, <laughs> we need to look no further than to what is happening now.